that they together as a whole they form something very complicated like a multicellular organism and which of course now in, in applications such as distributed ledgers in, in blockchain this becomes maybe applicable again. I had an invention that we spun off as a startup uh, back from Harvard University and grew that into a company which is now in Germany. My background is a bit in, in many areas. Uh, my day job basically is at the uh, University of Applied Science in Winterthur where I'm teaching mathematics uh, also in the area of complex systems so it is quite linked to physics and, and all applications. We also have research projects, I mean I'm teaching and also have research projects in industry, even in finance that deal with these kind of complex systems, how to uh, kind of model them, how to optimize them and of course one thing that I'm still using is machine learning. I mean I've been using machine learning since well, 20 years now. And so that's my main background, but being a mathematician, physicist by training, of course I'm also interested, I have been working in my past really on uh, cryptology or, or uh, things like that, but uh, I have keeping things a bit on the radar. And with this uh, blockchain technology, all this um, coming, I'm, I'm quite interested to do things there, especially the combination of machine learning and uh, blockchain technology, which I, which I think could be very fruitful. Blockchain, of course, is famous because of the, the cryptocurrencies and, and Bitcoin and all this. But, of course, the applications are much more, the potential applications are much more broad than that. Uh, I mean, it starts with Ethereum where you can have smart contracts. I mean, at, for the moment, smart contracts are still purely in finance, so you have inputs from the blockchain and outputs onto the blockchain, just in terms of uh, basically account uh, states, right? But the next step will be uh, insurance, uh, which is also pretty financial, but when you come to insurance, um, there is already the real world coming in, right? So somebody has to tell this contract that is running on this system uh, that something happened, that you had a car accident, that you drove too fast, that something relevant to the contract happened. And in order to determine this, of course, you have to use uh, crypto methods to make sure that nobody is cheating, but you also have to assess this real-world event. And for assessing this real-world event, that's, in my view, one uh, part where the machine learning can come in because there you have, usually you have big data, you have fuzzy data, you have data that uh, is not purely uh, binary, uh, true-false logic, but you have to interpret this logic and add this, this data. And, and of course humans can do it, I mean, of course they, in insurance there are a lot of people working that assess if somebody is committing fraud and things like that. But you could also very well imagine having robots or artificial intelligence do this kind of thing. And then you would have to link these artificial intelligence to the blockchain or to the uh, contract on the blockchain or something like that. So that's one kind of short term application. Uh, kind of medium term is, uh, it will be in the whole Internet of Things. I mean, Internet of Things is, is also one of the hot topics. Uh, for the moment, it's only kind of distributed sensors, mostly. Uh, there is still every company that sells them has their own standard, basically, and there's not so much, it's, really, it's not really a breakthrough yet that you would say, okay, it's already up and going, this whole internet of things, but if it's coming, and there's a big chance that it will be coming, then there you also have a, a question of trust which is the domain of the blockchain, right? how you can have two different parties on the internet that don't trust each other, how you can still do business, and if you have sensory data from uh, all kinds of devices, you, they have to basically trust each other, you have to trust the sensors that your neighbor is not playing around with your sensor and things like that. Right? Plus, of course, you have a huge amount of data, you have to interpret this data, and that's where the artificial intelligence is coming in again. Right? If you have a, the blockchain currently as it is, 
is quite uh, is a bit a mess, I would say. I mean, you, you see it if you read the news. I mean, now there has been this fork in Bitcoin. Uh, of course, people make a lot of money, but it's it's not very stable yet. So, if you want to have a, a real economy or real uh, currency, even uh, it has to become more stable at some point. And uh, of course, the the algorithms, the crypto algorithms, they are they are fine, they are provable, correct, or maybe somebody will find a, a leak sometime, but then they will be changed. But uh, uh, the, the control and the process of updating the blockchain is so far still kind of manual, and there are factions in, in all these uh, coins, like powerful people that are fighting each other, which method is the best. Um, so it would be nice to have something more automated, something also maybe involving a robot or machine that kind of finds out the optimum themselves without people arguing and having their own interests and political biases and things like that. And there are already some systems.